Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Story number 1. A Welcome Party, written by Echoing Cascade. When humanity first took to the stars, they expected solitude, hardship, and death. What they got instead was a welcome wagon from over 50 alien species. They all approached the first human explorers to use FTL-capable ships, like a favorite son returning home, safe and sound from war, victorious and clad in honors. This surprised the human expedition, to say the least. But the fact that every ambassador was also a high priest of the other people confused them more. The Roland ambassador explained that every sentient race has their own unique god. He, she, or it can create small miracles for their true believers, but their main role is to speak on behalf of their people to the pillars of creation, the great gods. When asked who was the god of humans, Captain Donovan Cressier, leader of the expedition, scratched his head and answered, Well, uh... We have several, but nowadays very few actually follow their teachings or even worship them. The high priests present were dumbfounded. These people worship no god. That made no sense to them. Captain Kaiser expected problems from this, but to his relief, the races shocked past quickly, and they offered aid, technology, and resources to help them take a place alongside them. They offered this for fair trade. They were kind. Too kind, thought Captain Kaiser. From the files they had shared, they aren't that different from humans in their practices. The more warlike species should have attacked us, seeing us worthy opponents due to the classification as death willers. Captain Kaiser was sitting alone in his ready room, wondering not for the first time what he was missing. Half of the species that welcomed us and offered trade are known for their predatory business deals. Yet the suits back at home all agree that the rates are fair. Hell, they are better than what they offer their own people. He didn't want to do this, but he had little choice. The people back home had found no rhyme or reason to this kindness, and it was making everyone nervous. He called the high priest now, the Roland ambassador, and asked her directly, she had been the one to talk with the coalition of species that had welcomed them. How in the hell am I supposed to approach this? Too timidly and I get nothing. Too rough and worst case scenario, humanity is done for. No pressure. Captain Kaiser opted for frankness. He simply asked, what's with all the kindness? He expected outrage, sadness or rage from the ambassador. Yet the reaction was uh, fear. She explained that when a probe caught sight of humanity, the news was spread throughout the known species, and they all did what the sort of occasion warranted. Captain Kaiser, prepare a welcome party. Priestess No looked awkwardly at the captain, which, coming from an eight-foot-tall humanoid lizard with a cobra-like head, was odd. We prayed to our gods to see if the greater gods would favor us in conflict with humanity. Captain Geyser, quite angry now. You, you asked if the gods would help attack us. The eight feet tall priestess recoiled, hands in a defensive position. No, 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 not war, just conflict. You know, like trade and, and, and maybe a little war. Captain Geyser was now more curious than angry. She could literally crush him with her bare hands, yet she now looked terrified. So, what do the gods say? She looked a little more calm as she recounted the answer as they received it. The god of war and destruction would take no side. This was a good omen. He only chose a side when a particularly psychopathic race went to war. 
the god of death and decay, would also take no side. Again, he only acted when a genocidal species took the field, so it was to be expected. Nothing alarming so far, thought Captain Kaiser. Priestess, no. The goddess of life and plenty abstained as well. This was worrisome, since usually she would help a new species, but the fact that the goddess of civilization and innovation would remain neutral shocked us. Captain Kaiser. Why? Priestess, no. She always aids newcomers. Always. She looked reluctant to continue. She was shaking now. Captain Kaiser urged Arana. Then what happened? Priestess, no. Every high priest and priestess, every man and woman of the cloth, every sentient who ever prayed to a god received an oracle from the goddess of chaos. Captain Kaiser had heard of the other four. They were the ones who could be called the most influential gods. Their favor would turn the tides of war or crumple empires. Who is she? Priestess, no. She reigns over chance and randomness. Captain Kaiser. Lady Luck. At this, the priestess nearly jumped out of his skin. Captain Kaiser. What did she say? Priestess, no. Looked at him in the eyes for the first time since meeting had begun. I don't like your odds. End of story. Story number two. Unkillable, written by Rosie 0.3. Specialist Qatar examined the still warm cadaver on the table in front of him once more. Just as confused as before, the medical scanner had spat out its report. This was the first example of an earthling that had been brought to him for evaluation. Something the military normally did on the first day of occupation of a new system. And normally, they brought him in a live specimen. But this was the fourth day in orbit of the third planet of this miserable backwater part of the galaxy. At least some of the rumors about difficult fighting and unexpected resistance must be true. But, uh, the specimen. Being dead, he had to skip the psychological profiling entirely for now. That would have to wait for a more intact example. Cause of death was obvious. It was still leaking bright red blood slowly from a head wound, probably caused by an assault bayonet from the looks of things. The body gently twitched from time to time, as if trying to defy the very laws of nature itself. But the scans were what made no sense. Excessive scar tissue all over the body, including assumed vital areas. This was confirmed visually. Ugly, pinkish ropes of it across the body almost randomly, or at least not according to any pattern that he recognized. Qatar would have assumed some religious or perhaps social significance if it weren't for the internal scars in the report. Internal organ functions were mostly predicted by the scanner, but it was clear that some were plain not right. Some seemed to have pieces missing from them, Others had tiny mechanical devices in or up against them. It was at least one example of an organ missing altogether, the connecting tissues circling back on themselves as if recoiling in horror. One manner of vile being did this to themselves. None of the scars were consistent with predator attacks. The more he looked at the scans, the worse it got. Nerve ends were severed in places, or pinched painfully between artificial implants of an unknown nature. Metal clips held tissue together. Newer, painfully raw-looking scars overlapped old, faded scars. One of the surface ones still had artificial fibers. Cloth fibers holding it closed. He fought down the urge to purge his stomachs. The very worst was where the scanner had identified that part of the alien was biologically from another different earthling. They cannibalized each other for new parts. A thousand interrogations of a thousand different species hadn't upset him as much as these things' very existence did. But Smeshless Qatar had a job to do. The soldiers would need the information he gathered here on how to best cleanse these abominable creatures from existence. He prepped himself for dissection. 
he would have to confirm the machine's report manually. Just as the laser cutter touched the surface of the earthling, it flung itself bolt upright with a great gasp of breath, scaring the excrement out of Katam and sending the cutter flying across the room. Before he could recover and call for help, the injured but impossibly not dead earthling monster lashed out with an arm, shattering Katar's frail body almost without effort. His last view of the world was spent helplessly watching as the earthling climbed off the table and stalked off into the ship. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.